Now, the last uh, presentation uh, will be made by Andrea Halmos. Uh, she works in the unit of uh, public services. Uh, basically, uh, this unit, if I may say, before it was called uh, e-government, now it's expanding certainly the scope, but I think that many of the discussions this morning have had to do with how to interact and how to influence the public sector, the governments, and I think that it's good to know what is what we, in, the, in this specific area of applications of ICT in public services, uh, we are doing. Good afternoon, and thank you for the introduction. It's exactly what I will be talking about. Um, as you may, some of you may know, this is the unit where we come from. This is the e-government unit where I work at, and we've been working a lot along the e-government action plan in order to help public administrations modernize, help um, uh, them become more effective, more efficient with the use of ICT tools. And it's been going on for a, almost a decade or even more than a decade, and the current action plan is in place until 2015. However, what we see now is times are changing, and it's obviously I don't have to tell you, but I think it's now time to also, uh, maybe I refer back to some of those um, uh, points you mentioned about uh, the, the, the perceived disconnect between the public administrations and government and citizens out there or between um, a transition phase we're at. So governments are starting to realize that indeed the uh, all tools are making things more effective and user-friendly with the ICT tools. It's not necessarily um, reached all the efficiency uh, goals they've aimed at. And it's also because there's, um, there's a lot of new tools out there and, and citizens and users are much more connected. They're much more used to having openness in their daily lives, having really user-friendly services from the private sector. And uh, just in general, they have higher expectations and public sector needs to realize it and in a, in a way needs to transform in a way that actually endorses it, uh, the way citizens and users interact already and they need to ha somehow embed it in their system. So this is the kind of uh, starting point to this. We see that open data is transforming a lot of the ways things are going in the area of, of the private sector, in communities, in citizens' interactions. And we also have seen that the opening up of public sector information, for example, through the PSI directive, is actually uh, attracting users to come in and create new services, essentially new public services. If this was also opened up on a public service level, so if services were open for in, an, in a reusable digital manner, so not only to other public administrations, but also to third parties, so that they could come in and create new or more user-friendly, better, uh, more personalized services, this would eventually create not only more jobs and, and uh, more businesses, but also a lot more user-friendly, a lot more effective services and a more reconnect with public administrations themselves. And essentially, if third parties can come in, some of the services that public administrations currently offer, they may be essentially offered by third parties. Um, and if it, if it was also translated to the public uh, policy making, so that public administrations were able to open up their decision making process in a way that they would engage with the interested parties and embed it in their, in their decision making process, that would create more trust, more accountability for government. So here we, 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 we really believe in the collaboration, transparency and participation uh, aspects of this open government idea. We've done a number of, uh, we've funded a number of projects under the SIP, and I, I will leave uh, brochures outside in the area of e-participation um, and in the area of cloud of public services, how to reuse set of uh, open data sets or op open uh, service sets for the creation of new and better public services. So I'll leave those behind because this is the kind of idea that was behind when we started looking at what we would do in Horizon 2020 and what we would do with the policy going forward. So in the spirit of how to modernize public administrations with this whole open government mindset, we're um, going to co uh, fund a number of projects in trying to demonstrate how this works and how this actually has an impact on public sector as, at large. So your interest may be in projects where uh, we would welcome, of course, the, uh, the uh, willingness of public administrations to open up the way they, they, uh, they create or engage uh, citizens for the creation and the, uh, delivery of new public services and how they engage with citizens for pol policy making. So you'll see that maybe some of the um, calls that are in 2015, I, li I listed those, may be of interest to you. And I will also leave a little flyer uh, outside for you to see the details. 
One is about <coughs> ICT-enabled open government, so how to create more user-friendly public services by reusing open data or open services, or how to ensure or enhance transparency of public administrations by the reuse of these. Um, we've also had a call, uh, re I believe it's now it's closed, but uh, on, on taking this e-participation idea forward, but it may be something uh, to, to look into. And also in 2009, we'll have an SME instrument. It's something that I will just mention concretely for our area. We're looking for innovative mobile e-government apps, but it's, an, it's a kind of instrument under Horizon 2020 that exists in many other uh, areas of the program, so you may want to look into this because it could be of interest to you. And these are the links where you can find us, so on Horizon 2020 and the e-government unit, so the public services unit. And we've also written about this policy idea uh, draft document called the Vision for Public Services, and it's online, and you're more than welcome to read it and give us your feedback on it. Thank you very much.